video, I want to share my miscarriage experience because when I was personally going through it, it was something that I knew was common, but I also didn't really know much about at all because I feel like people don't talk about the experience and really what you can expect or how that looks like or what you go through when you experience one. So when it happened to me, I just was constantly researching and looking for other people sharing their stories. And I really just want to share as a resource to others who may be going through something like this and also if you have been through this before to know that you're not alone and that this is such a common thing it's like one in four pregnancies and in a miscarriage which is so common and i feel like people don't talk about it this was my first pregnancy and my first loss and that makes things really really difficult because moving forward i feel like it will never be the same um and i don't know anything different from what I just experienced so pregnancy is now very scary and I will say pregnancy is scary for anybody because even in a healthy pregnancy I know um, pregnancy is just scary you never know what's going on inside of your body at all times and it's very difficult so I'm here to share my story first I want to say I am um, just over a month out from my healing and I feel ready I feel okay to talk about it I think it's something that's okay to talk about and I personally it doesn't bother me like when people ask me about it so if you do see this and then you also see me in person and you want to address it or like talk about it definitely it doesn't bother me um, I feel like I, if anything, I see, I feel seen because it is something that was so real that did happen to me. Um, and I just don't mind talking about it. So if anyone needs someone, needs advice, wants to reach out, I'm here for you. It is such a difficult thing that you should not feel alone in. The beginning of this year, me and my husband found out that my sister-in-law Grayson was pregnant. And I feel like that was the first thing that happened that really made us start to consider starting a family because she is younger than us and she was pregnant and she's my best friend and his sister and so we're like oh my gosh if you're doing it like I need to get on board like we have to do this together so that was like the first real thing then February comes and it is my husband's 30th birthday and on that trip to Mexico, we were really just like thinking about it and considering it. I remember when he turned 30, he kind of felt like, okay, now that we're 30, like if we want to have a family, we need to kind of get started. So we both just started to feel really ready. We thought about it more in February. And then um, February, March, we were just like thinking about it. Then April came and we decided, okay, this is our first month that we want to start trying. Let's start trying and see what happens because you don't know if you're going to get pregnant on the first try. We've never actually tried to get pregnant before. So let's just see. And if it's meant to be, it'll be. We felt more validation to try that because over the past six months, we have been in talks with hiring a CEO for Classy Network, and we finally decided in January that we were hiring a CEO, and he was going to start around like May 12th or 13th or something like that. Um, so in May, he was going to start in May. So April, we're like, okay, let's start trying and just see if it happens. We feel better now that we know that our business, which is our baby, like our business is going to also have someone else on board with us to help us grow the company. So that helped us a lot feel like a big weight was lifted off of us because as founders, we were like, there's no way we're going to be able to start a family and run a company. We can't do both. So when we did find this person to come into Classy and help us grow the company, we felt like, okay, wow, that's happening the same time as Grayson getting pregnant. Like maybe this is our sign that it is time for us as well to think about starting a family. So we just said, if it happens, it happens. It's meant to be. Let's try for the month of April. So May comes around and it's time to see if it worked or not. Um, we decided to take a pregnancy test. I think it was like four days before my missed period. Uh, I think it was Tuesday, and then I was supposed to get my period on Saturday. Um, so we decided to take a test early just because Saturday was Mother's Day, or Sunday was Mother's Day, and our family was gonna be in town that weekend. We were like, oh, how iconic if we tell them like the same time as Mother's Day. Um, let's just see. Did see some signs from God or the universe that I could be pregnant. And that was what really made me feel like I wanna take this test right now because tell me how 
like a few weeks before this, we are in Austin, Texas, and me and my husband are just enjoying Austin. We were at like a barbecue place and we were outside and I'm literally taking a picture of him. And then all of a sudden, as I'm taking a picture of my husband, a big butterfly lands on my arm. Hell, you guys. How freaking cool. Oh my God. And they say butterflies are a sign of fertility or um yeah i think it's like fertility and like good luck and things like that and so a butterfly landed on my arm and it was like this big butterfly and i was taking pictures of him so i immediately just like started filming this butterfly on me so i have it on camera and everything and that was such a magical thing because i feel like what are the odds that a butterfly just lands out on you outside of a barbecue restaurant <laughs> so that was something that was like hmm, maybe that is like a sign of some type of fertility or something and then that next that same day, like literally an hour later, my husband and I are at the park, we're laying um, on the grass and a ladybug comes and lands on my husband's leg. So we're like, hmm, these are like some interesting signs. Also, our business partner, he had told us like, watch, you're gonna tell us that you're pregnant as soon as the new CEO starts. Like that literally, you're gonna, he's gonna get started and then that same week you're gonna tell me you're pregnant. That's what he had told me back in January. And what are the odds, literally the same, time I took a positive pregnancy test was two days before our CEO was starting at Classy Network. And I'm like, what? The timing of all of this is just so surreal. It felt so right, but it also was like a lot all at once and very fast. Um, so yeah, it just kind of felt magical and exciting and we were just like so ready for this. So we take a pregnancy test. And at this point, I had been like prepping my body by taking prenatals ever since I think like March. I had been taking prenatal vitamins. So I've been doing that. I've been eating super healthy. I've just been like trying to prep myself for a pregnancy just in case, you know. Um, so we just still didn't know if it was going to be positive or not. We thought for sure it would not be positive because it was our first test we've ever taken. First time trying. And it's usually, you know, it's not guaranteed to happen on the first try. And also because I had not even missed my period yet. So we're like, if anything, it's too early to tell. So we take the pregnancy test and we both look at it and we're completely shocked because it says positive. It says pregnant. And I had never taken a pregnancy test before this. Like this is my first real pregnancy scare, but like we were ready. So we were just like excited. We just couldn't believe it. My husband just kept saying, no way, no way this is happening. And for me, I felt happy. And then immediately after I started feeling scared, I'm like, oh my gosh. And anyone who's been pregnant before can probably relate because it's like, oh, it's already inside of me. It's already happening. Like there's no turning back. Like this is for real and that is so scary but also so exciting so we were really happy and we decided not to tell anyone that first day it was just me and Jacob that knew and I just immediately started researching like looking for like books to get and downloading the apps and it was really fun for me because this is a new exciting chapter that I'm so ready for like I knew I always wanted to be a mom I love kids so much I was just like so happy because I was ready to be the best mom ever and I still am I'm still ready for that um so yeah I started doing all of that that night the next day we decided to tell Grayson and then my mom and then his mom and my dad and his dad so we just told like our really close family because we knew if anything was going to happen that we wanted our support system to be there through us through everything and I'm so glad that we told everyone that we told um and so yeah, everyone was just so happy. Their reactions are truly some of my core memories that I will hold with me for the rest of my life and they truly mean so much. And that's another reason like why I wanted to share because I didn't want to act like this didn't happen. It was such a beautiful, real, meaningful experience for my entire family um, and for me and my husband. So I want to celebrate that because I will never get back our first ever time telling our family, you know? Um, so it's like, I want to share that even if it did end in a loss. Really let's go into now um, the pregnancy symptoms that I had. So I felt really good. I didn't really get many aversions or nausea or anything. I did get a little bit of like body fatigue. I remember like doing my makeup like this and my arm would just get tired of just hitting the beauty blender on my face. And I was like, that's a little weird. Um, and then the other symptom that I did get was, um, 
some cramping and I know cramping is normal but then they also say that's a sign of miscarriage so it's really stressful which most pre uh, pregnancy symptoms are stressful because they are always like it could be fine or it could be bad so for me um, I did experience s some cramping I experienced a lot of cramping on my left side and at six weeks when I was supposed to be like six weeks pregnant is when I was like Okay, the cramping on the left side is pretty intense. I really want to go see a doctor to make sure it's in the right spot because my mom had had an ectopic pregnancy. And so she was like, just for peace of mind, like let's make sure it's in the right spot. I'm so glad I went to the doctor at six weeks, which they usually recommend you go at eight weeks. We went at six weeks and at that appointment, I did experience some like concerning news, um, but also they told me it could be completely fine so right off the jump it was a really like traumatizing experience because they had told me that the baby's growth was a little bit smaller than it should be if you're six weeks it is is kind of measuring more like five weeks or five weeks two days something like that and so i was like oh no like that's not a good sign so i felt really bad and i think that like immediately you go towards like the guilt like is it me like what am i doing and the only thing that really is happening at this time is that it's pretty stressful at work but like being a business owner it is like always stressful and I just don't think I can escape that ever really um obviously the next time I'm pregnant like maybe I'll really really try not to stress but it's just almost impossible so that is what I was like kind of putting on myself I'm like you need to not stress out you need to just like really focus on relaxing during the next couple of weeks because all they had told me was there's really nothing we can do, but um, there is a heartbeat, so that's good. But it was a little low. It was like 106 beats per minute, which is pretty low for an uh, embryo or a baby at that size. So they just recommend waiting an another couple weeks and then come back at the eight-week appointment. So, so I said I'm going to try to relax a little bit. I'm going to eat really good. I'm not going to miss any meals. Like I really want to make sure this baby is growing healthy. Um, I maintained like working out and just like being my being as healthy as I could be um, over the next couple of weeks and then I went back at the eight week appointment or I guess right before my eight week appointment is when I noticed some spotting and I had just run on the treadmill and immediately after like I think a two mile run on the treadmill I um, went to the bathroom and I noticed like a pink spot on the toilet paper and I was like oh no and so immediately again, you feel like the guilt of like, should I not have been running? I don't know if that's what it was. Um, but you see also pregnant people all the time, like running throughout their whole pregnancy. So I was like told that this is okay, something I could do. But of course you like blame yourself right off the bat. And I just freaked out. I called the triage nurse to like make sure everything was okay. And they had assured me that this is normal and common in the first trimester and that I would probably experience some brown spotting the next couple of days if it was pink. So... I said okay and my appointment was only two days away so they said let's just like give it the next two days see how you're feeling and then we'll see you um at your eight week appointment um in two days so i said okay and i tried not to freak out but i did experience brown spotting the next day and um that's about it i was just like so ready to get to the doctor at the eight week appointment is was probably like one of the worst days of my life like it was such a hard day because that's the day I found out that the baby did not have a heartbeat. Um, and I really, going into that appointment, was super hopeful. Even though I had the spotting, I really didn't want to freak myself out until they told me. I even have a picture of me going into the doctor's office, like smiling in the bathroom beforehand. Because it is such an exciting time going into your eight-week appointment. To see the growth of the baby and just like to know you're almost out of the first trimester. And I was just so hopeful. And I felt like I had been so patient because you're waiting like eight weeks to go see that that the baby is okay you know and I was like I've been patient and I'm like the baby is gonna be okay and I'm like just super positive going into it but as soon as you get into the dark room it's just like I felt this unsettling like nervousness um and as soon as the transvaginal ultrasound like is in there like I immediately knew something wasn't right because on the screen the baby kind of looked the same as last time like the growth really didn't get any bigger um and then the, they they had told me that the baby had not grown much since the last appointment and that they were so sorry and that there's no heartbeat and 
that was pretty much it. Um, I look over at my husband and he just looks so sad and I'm just like, my heart just kind of like drops and I just feel sick to my stomach. Um, and yeah, we just like walk out of there and we go to the car because we can't see the doctor right after because uh, our doctor appointment wasn't for another like hour and a half. So we go to the car and then we knew we were gonna have to come back to talk to the doctor. So went to the car and immediately just like started crying and we called our parents to let them know. Um, and that was like the most difficult conversation to like get out because like to say that we lost the baby was like such a difficult thing to say. And is just such a hard thing that I don't wish on anybody. We had to, some more time to kill, so we went by Grayson's house because she lives right by the doctor's office, and I used the bathroom there. And I think it's because um, the ultrasound is like a stick that they like put up you. Because of that, it like triggers some more bleeding for me. And before that, I had not been bleeding. So before that, it was just like spotting, right? And I was supposed to be eight weeks. They had they told me that the baby stopped growing at six weeks one day. So you would think, at least for me, like I thought if you have a miscarriage, as soon as the baby loses the heartbeat, you're just gonna start bleeding. But that didn't happen for me. So what I had was what they call a missed miscarriage. And what that means is is there's no heartbeat or viable pregnancy, but your body's still holding on to it. So for the next two weeks, up to that eight week mark, my body was holding on to it. And I had just started to see spotting. But right after the ultrasound appointment, I started bleeding more. And so it then started happening, but the bleeding would just kind of stop and go for me. So it was really confusing. Using um, after Grayson's house, like I noticed, I had started to bleed a little bit, um, and so I went and got a pad to put down just in case. And then I went back to the doctor. When I went to the doctor, this was like the hardest part because they checked me, and then I started bleeding more. And he said, "Yes, like it's kind of giving like a light period right now, so I think the process is happening naturally for you, but." Here's some options, and he kind of recommended that I get a DNC, which is a surgery where they put you under and they go inside of you and scrape everything out of you. Um, he recommended to do that within like 48 hours. And for me, I was like, what? Like I literally have never been put under before. I've never had a surgery before. All this is happening so fast. I just started bleeding a little bit. Like I just, started bawling in the doctor's office because it is just like so much all at once and now i'm scared because i don't know what is going to happen to my own body um and that's like a really big thing i did not expect i didn't know you had all these options or that you could have a miscarriage and still be holding on to it so um just to kind of give you guys for like education or like for like a resource of like what to expect there are three options when you do have a miscarriage. One is you can wait and process it naturally and see if your body can do that. Some people's body doesn't release it naturally and you have to do the other two options, but that is option one. Option two is you can do mesopristol, I think is what it's called, and that's basically a suppository pill that you put up you to induce labor, to um, like kind of force you into, force you to dilate and contract and release what um, is in there. And then um, number three is to have a DNC, which is the, they say like least traumatic because like you're not awake and like you're not watching yourself bleed or you're not going through like labor contractions with the pill to, to release everything. Um, but to me, it sounds also very traumatic because they put you under and then they have to scrape everything out and suck it all out of you um which is like traumatic for your body so really there's no like great scenario here like all of them are very hard and traumatic and that is something that i feel like people don't really talk about um so yeah those are your options so that was those are options they had given me and because i had started bleeding already i wanted to really like wait it out and see if my body could process this naturally so that is what we wanted to do although the doctor told me to still book my dnc surgery i booked it but like the next day i ended up canceling it because i just didn't feel good with that decision so we leave the doctor's office and we're really like sad we're processing the news we're seeing family um and that night was probably the hardest because 
it was like me trying to go to sleep and also feeling like cramping and just not knowing what my body is about to experience because if you look it up you see some people like pass a sack and like feel it come out which is very traumatic um and for me at six weeks one day is technically what i was holding on to is the size of the baby um for for that time it's like you really don't know it's like pretty early on so you don't know if like you're going to experience, you know, having to release that big of a sack or anything. Um, and I'll get into what my experience was like for those of you who may be in a similar position. But yeah, it's just like very scary. So that night was difficult because I did start bleeding. But again, it was like stop and go. And um, I was experiencing just like an uncomfortable kind of like cramping. And I just was heartbroken. So I just remember that night like I couldn't sleep and I was just bawling. My husband was holding me and it was like really sad. Um, he recommended like maybe take a bath. So he like ran me a bath at 3 a.m. and I took a bath. I actually found out like probably shouldn't take a bath just in case like you're bleeding and stuff. Like it's probably not best to take a bath. But for me, because it like the bleeding had kind of stopped at night, I was like, I think it's okay. And it did really calm me down and it made me feel good. But just keep that in mind. So that night was definitely the hardest. Um, we decided the next day we want to just wait to pass everything naturally to see if I can. And I like looked, like I said, looked everything up to just see what was gonna happen. And really I just said, you know what? I'm not gonna overthink it. I'm just gonna let my body do its thing and I'm gonna try not to think about it 24 seven. So um, I decided to just wait it out, cancel that surgery appointment, canceled the surgery appointment. Um, but I did get the mesopristal like prescription just in case I needed it over the weekend. Um, but luckily my body did start naturally releasing everything over the next few days. I will say going into the weekend was really difficult for me. It was just unfortunate timing, honestly, because that weekend was also um, Grayson's baby shower. And there was no way I was going to miss Grayson's baby shower. Like me and Cammy have been, which is her mom, have been planning the baby shower. We kind of like had the whole theme picked out. We had the decorations we had bought. Um, and I knew that like, yes, I was cramping and bleeding, but I wasn't going to miss that because this is such an important time in her life. And I just want to be there for her, even though I was also going through something. So for me, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's because I was raised by a really strong Korean mother, but I have like a lot of mental strength I guess where I can just like put my head in a place and I just said this day is for Grayson and I'm excited for her and that's all I'm gonna think about um, so I went through the day fine like mentally I was okay like I was really just there and excited for her I felt so bad for her because I know she was feeling like a sense of guilt and I did not want her to feel that way but I know just like the circumstances just are what they were and it was just a difficult day for the whole family um but i'm really grateful because i did have my two best friends that helped me like as soon as i found out i also told them about the loss and they immediately came over and they said what do you need me to do for grayson's baby shower like i know you're you've been planning this so they had come over the night before the shower they helped me prep all the decorations and set up all the flower bouquets because like it was a little uncomfortable for me to be like bending over and walking up and down the stairs and they really did everything for me the night before and I could not have gotten through the baby shower without Miko and Allie. Um, and then the next day they even came early and helped the family set up and get it all ready so that I wouldn't be like moving around too much. Uh, so I'm so grateful for them and like that's why I think it's so important to like have a support system through pregnancy and pregnancy loss because doing it alone I, do, I just feel like it's so lonely and so like impossible. I don't know if I would have been able to get through it as strongly as I did if I didn't have my support system there for me. So we all make it through Grayson's shower. It was definitely difficult. I think mo more so for my husband because his whole family's there and it's like about a baby to come into the world. And you know, um, I just, it was really hard to look over at him because he was really struggling through that and maybe I'll let him kind of talk about his experience, but that was a really, really difficult day. And not only was it that that we were going through, but I was also cramping a lot that day. That was like the most, um, the day that I actually lost the most blood. Um, and 
I didn't really know because I was like distracted by the shower, but I was feeling uncomfortable cramping. And towards the end of the shower, I kind of like looked at my mom and I was like, I think I need to go. Like I need to leave. So the shower ended, we finished, we stayed till the end. Um, and then as soon as people were starting to like get up a little bit, me and my mom just kind of scooped out. And as soon as I get in the car, I was like, <sighs> like I started feeling cramping like pretty uncomfortably to where I was like, I gotta go to the bathroom trigger warning TMI like if you don't want to know the the details that I'm about to say then stop watching here but I'm gonna kind of like talk about what my experience was again I was six weeks one day as when I lost the baby and um, this was my experience passing it naturally so after the shower I was really uncomfortable, feel, feeling cramping, immediately run up the stairs. Luckily, the um, baby shower was like in my neighborhood, so I was able to get home within like five minutes. And as soon as I sit on the toilet, I start feeling like blueberry-sized clots like kind of falling out of me. And I was so glad my mom was there because she is so strong and she also has been through a miscarriage before. So she was just like holding me while I was on the toilet and I was just like, I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared, like just like kind of freaking out, almost crying. Because it's really scary. Like you don't want to feel like a sack coming out and like all of that is just so traumatizing. So I was just kind of freaking out. I'm a little glad my husband wasn't there because I feel like that was such a traumatic experience and I didn't want him to also have to be there through it. He stayed to help clean up the baby shower stuff and my mom had taken me home. And I just feel like everything happens for a reason. Like having her there, she was so strong. She even like looked in the toilet to see if she could see anything. But there was just so much red darkness like you really couldn't see the details of what was at the bottom of the toilet so we couldn't really see if i had passed the sack or not but to me personally it didn't feel like i did it just felt like blueberry sized clotting um immediately after that though i did feel a little faint i felt nauseous because it's just so scary and like you're like is that everything is there more so I just felt like really faint. My mom put like a wet washcloth on my head, my neck, and I just laid on the couch. I really hadn't eaten that much, so um, Grayson and Cammie got me lunch and they brought it over. And after I ate, I started to feel better and I was like, okay, I feel okay again. Me and my husband watched a movie that night. Um, and really that was the most of it for me. Um, so. That was my experience passing it naturally. I didn't feel like a whole sack come out or see anything too traumatic. So I do feel like I had a pretty lucky experience, although this is such an unfortunate thing to be talking about. And then the rest of the few days that came, I started to get back into work um, and I was just like kind of distracting myself mentally. I wasn't going into the office. I stayed a week at home while I was um, going through the loss and like the healing process. I just felt like a regular period after that for the next like five days. But again, I didn't lose like a whole bunch of clots after that. It was just like bleeding in a pad and just like a period for the rest of the week. So it took me about a week and a half to lose everything naturally. And then um, on June 14th, I think, is when I went to the doctor to get checked to see the progress and everything had passed. And I will say like two days before that appointment, I started feeling like everything was drying up, kind of like towards the end of a period feels. And I was like, I think I'm almost done. I think I'm, I'm done with this process because I feel like I'm starting to dry up naturally. And so I was just hoping that I had passed everything because I did feel like that end of period feeling. And then I went to the doctor and they had told me that everything passed naturally and I was cleared to live life normally again. I was just so grateful to hear this news because I know some people have complications um, from passing it naturally and that still need to get a DNC and that is still something that could happen uh, but luckily my body did just pass everything naturally and I got some that really good news and I know it's hard to say good news because this is nothing is good about the situation really but I am grateful that I was able to do it naturally and get back to my natural state um, on its own but yeah so he had told me though that um, everything looks good. It looks like you're either ovulating again or maybe you have a cyst on your ovary, which is normal. And like those usually just kind of go away on their own. So like, don't be concerned, but one of the two things, but it looks like your eggs are, or it looks like your ovaries are ready to ovulate and like you're already getting back on track. So that was really great to hear. Like for me, I was like, oh my gosh, does that mean I need to start trying like right away? Like, I don't know. So that was pretty much our full experience of experiencing 
a pregnancy loss and it was definitely difficult. It is the most beautiful thing to be pregnant. I had the most beautiful four weeks of knowing I was pregnant and I am just so grateful for those memories that I have and I'm hopeful that I will have my rainbow baby as they say in the future and I think for me and my husband we're not losing hope we're definitely gonna try again I don't know how soon like I mean I feel like we're pretty much ready to start trying again and as I'm speaking right now I literally just got my period for the first time since the miscarriage which I think is good I want to have like a full cycle and like kind of get myself back on track so I know about when I would be ovulating and things like that so I'm just hopeful that we can have a healthy baby in the future because now I'm so ready I'm so ready to be a mom I'm so ready to grow our family and have a Natalie and Jacob baby and Let's just see what happens, but thank you guys so much for listening to my journey and being here to give me the space to share about miscarriage, to bring awareness to it, and my personal experience. Like This is a very intimate experience that um, is normally private that I was not sure that I wanted to share, but I was so nervous to share it, and I still am, but I also feel like after posting my first video on TikTok and Instagram, I just feel like there's so many people out there that experience this and it's only good to bring more awareness to this because it is so common and I know that when you're going through it you feel so alone and I just want you to feel like you're not alone if you are going through this because so many of us go through it. I've gotten at least, I swear, like 10 messages from women who told me that they experienced pregnancy loss at the same time as me. So it's like Wow, like what an amazing community to build of women, like strong women who are also in the same chapter and who are also experiencing something similar to like have that support and that community to lean on each other. And I feel so grateful that me sharing has brought us together and, and for me to be able to connect with other people and to feel we can all kind of like bring more healing and support to one another. So. Thank you guys for letting me share my story. Me and my husband are doing okay and we are just, you know, now we're fully just processing it. I will say like the, the feeling of sadness definitely comes and goes. For me, I can get distracted into work. I can, um, you know, be thinking about other things and be completely fine. And then I find myself when I, as soon as I get in the car after work, like it just kind of like hits me because I immediately come back to my personal life outside of work and outside of like my social life and I'm just I have this sadness because I'm so ready to be a mom now and that's something that's really difficult some of the things that have helped me I know this is so random but I download the I downloaded the Sudoku app and I am loving that because it is allowing me to kind of like disassociate from the world, not go on social media, to entertain myself and just have alone time with myself without letting my brain go to a sad place. And so I've been playing Sudoku like it's no one's business on the weekends. Um, like anytime I'm alone, I'm just playing Sudoku and it is really fun. Like I love it. Um, so I do recommend downloading some type of entertainment outside of social media because I know you can go on your for you page and just like see something that can be really triggering that kind of brings you into sadness. So that's one thing that I definitely recommend. Maybe just like binge watching a Netflix show like I love that too. But after you go through pregnancy and pregnancy loss like you don't realize how many shows reference pregnancy or pregnancy loss or like I swear, like we'll watch a Netflix show and I'm just like, oh my gosh, they're talking about babies. So something that can like not be super triggering, I would recommend like Sudoku. So that's one little tip that I do have for you guys. Um, but other than that, um, that's about it. I am probably going to like go back to my normal content, but now I feel like you guys know so much about me personally that Maybe I will be introducing some more like personal content outside of our brand and our business. There's so much I want to share with you. Like I had mentioned about us hiring a CEO, like there's so much into that. I'll make a video about that process a little bit and just share some more like personal stuff as we are trying to conceive. And I know that there's so many people out there who are mothers and are um, that have families and 
people that are also trying to conceive or one day want to have a baby. So I think I'm going to bring you guys along for the journey for me because I feel like I've had such great support and such a strong community here already that I just want to keep growing it and I love connecting with you guys. So thank you again for watching and giving us that support. It truly means the world and I hope this video helps somebody out there. Please let me know in the comments if you found it helpful for me to share my story and my experience because that really gives me the like affirmation that this is this is good to bring awareness to and to share about and to be a resource. So thank you guys. I appreciate you and I'll see you in the next video.